Welcome to Cappuccino with Amber. I'm your host, Amber, with the latest and the most sizzling, hottest news of the week. So, along with me is my co host, Stefano, and the Guru. We're back again. So, Guru, do you know who's dating who? Um, I heard something about a prince, right? Yeah, okay. And a pop singer. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> Prince Harry is secretly dating Ellie Golden. The pair were spotted in a passionate clinch under a blanket at a pool event. Prince Harry has been single since he split with ex-girlfriend Cressida Bonus two years ago. The royal was spotted getting very close at a polo match in Berkshire. Onlookers said that the pairs were all over each other. So there was an insider who's close to Harry's social circle and who said that after the polo there was a late night party where pictures were being not allowed to be taken and I guess both were caught and uh, so it became quite a rumor that they're very much together. Oh yeah, Stefano, did you say that Prince was from... I think he was Wales? from Wales, yeah. yeah. That's right. And Ellie Golding is a singer from the UK, I believe, and she's pretty popular in the US now too. Mm-hmm. So seeing this pop star with a prince, soon to be king, you know, you never know. That's kind of... Spot to fly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, guys, whenever I was 12 years old, I thought I was a pretty smart kid. I mean, I was making straight A's, playing sports, and I was doing good, pretty good at school. But this gentleman named Tanishq Abraham, he's only 12 years old. He's been doing some amazing things. Have you guys heard about that? I think I read a little about it in the newspapers. What, what was it about? He took community college courses like at the age of seven? Yes, that's right. He got his diploma at 10 years old. Oh, my God. Now, that is yeah. so, that's an Einstein for you. Yeah, that's pretty much the Einstein of the modern age. And something about colleges, you know something about that, Stephanie? Yeah, he's going to community college, or he actually just graduated with three degrees from community oh, college. Oh, wow. Three. Talk about three. speed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and now he got accepted to both UC Davis and UC Santa Cruz as a transfer student. Wow. That's that's really nice. I mean, he says he wants to be like a cardiologist or a neurologist or a doctor, and even the president of the United States one day. Well, that's yeah. That's a child's dream, but the, with the rate that he's, what he's going, he might even get there. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> So we all know that Siri is good, you know, for finding directions or finding the nearest restaurant. But recently, there's a story that came out in Australia, specifically in Cairns, Australia, about this woman who she had a one year old daughter and I think she was suffering from some sort of chest infection. And she actually the mom heard her name is um, Stacy Gleason and mm-hmm. she heard sounds coming from her daughter's room. And it actually turned out that her daughter wasn't breathing. Oh, my God. So she That's ran upstairs. Serious. Yeah, it is very serious. So she ran upstairs and then what happened is that, you know, she saw her not breathing and she started giving CPR. But what, what was unique about it is that she was able to use Siri on her iPhone in order to call the emergency medical services. Oh, wow. So she was able to give CPR while calling them at the same time. So she didn't have to have one phone in one hand and then resuscitating her daughter, which her name is Gianna. She didn't have to, you know, like, she was able to multitask. Wow. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. She said that even if she had the phone in her hand and tried to dial 911 in the state that she was going to be in, she wasn't capable to type it in. Or yeah. She was, like, she was really surprised, really shocked. She wouldn't have been able to do that. So Siri really saved her life. And the doctor said uh, about the child that every second mattered. Yeah, every Although, second did know, matter. She didn't really get any long-term lasting harmful effects. I'm that. so glad Siri yeah. saved mm-hmm. the day. Yeah, that's right. So guys, did you hear about the Taylor Swift fan, crazy fan? Oh yeah, she looks a lot like Taylor, I've seen pictures. I know, and this girl, she's from Netherlands, her name is Lot, and guess what she did? What? Well, she recreated the most iconic outfits of Taylor from the 58th Grammy Awards, the dress that she wore with the pink skirt, flowy skirt, and you know. she made that herself? She sewed it herself, and she recreated the entire look She got about 6,000 Instagram followers. And not only that, Taylor, when she looked at those pictures on Tumblr account, and she was like, oh my God, this looks like me. So even Taylor (laughs) mistakes herself for her for herself. I know, and this girl is absolutely amazing. She sewed that, uh, the rocking, the the silver shimmery outfit that she wore at one of the concerts. Mm -hmm. So it was like a mirror image, but this, this lady is so talented in sewing the dress. Taylor was like all compliments of her. Wow, great fans. 
So guys, is it time to change our Netflix and Facebook passwords? I mean, I've heard some things going on about maybe some leaked passwords and stuff like that. You guys read about that? I sure did, and you know what? Nobody was scared of that drama. Even Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO of Facebook, mm -hmm. he his account got hacked. Even his? Yes, because you know his password was like da da, and it was so like since he is a dad now, uh -huh. so it was so <laughs> obvious for hackers to crack in that code. So they basically hacked into his account. Wow. So. Us as users, I mean, I have a Netflix account and I have a Facebook account too. Mm -hmm. I'm probably gonna go home and change that real quick. And, and you know, and Netflix has actually come up with a, a software program which actually tells you how you can like put the password in perspective. Uh -huh. Like, never choose a, like a sport or your birth date or something like that, which is easy to crack. Yeah. So, isn't it called Stumbler, right? Exactly. That's yeah. what it is. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. So, so, thank you for filling me in. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> All right, well, yeah, guys. Guys, be aware, so make sure your passwords are safe. That's right. You know, guys, all this talk about Facebook and Netflix password hacking and all that stuff has got me stressed out. But luckily, you know, actually in about a month, I'm going to fly to Cancun. Oh, that's cool. Lucky you. Yeah, yeah, lucky you. <laughs> Speaking of beaches, so in Turkey, one of the things they're trying to do is to increase their tourism there. Mm -hmm. And one way that they're trying to do that is to create like more diving reefs for people that do artificial diving. Okay. So what they're doing is they took one of their um, airplanes, it's called an Airbus A300, and they took it, they took it out of the ocean, well, they took it onto the ocean, mm -hmm. out of their um, Kusadasi um, resort area uh -huh. and then they just sunk the ship oh my god the ship or the was it the or the plane? plane yeah they sunk it uh -huh. to the bottom of the ocean and what they did is they had to cut it into different pieces so it took two and a half hours for them to to take apart the plane and it was funny because people they were taking pictures they had their fog horns and they were blowing those and then it was just there were actually pictures released of it and there were people swimming out to the plane as it was being dismembered Wow. Oh my God. Well, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm flying in about a month. Let's hope there's no passengers on there or my my plane's not going to be the one sinking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would be horrible. That would be a scary vacation, though. Yes, that would be a very <laughs> exciting vacation. <laughs> so what do you do with rich parents with Instagrams? Hmm. I know my mom doesn't have an Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> well, these rich parents, uh, they are boosting on Instagram about pets like cheetahs, Ferraris. Pets. Cheetah pets? Yes. I didn't even know you have pets like cheetahs. Exactly. Mm. <laughs> and, what they, and you know, they, these kids, these parents, they actually spoil their kids. Uh -huh. I, I wouldn't call it spoiling. They're actually encouraging on Instagram saying that if you work hard, you can get here at our mm. level. Well, and I, mean, not, I guess that's a good, that's a good uh, message to so, say. Yeah, you know, and, mm. you know, and not only that, so one of these ladies, there's so many parents who posted pictures mm -hmm. so one lady actually took her daughter to a shopping trip to Louis Vuitton and she posted oh our weekly shopping trip no, <laughs> to, Louis <Vuitton. laughs> to Louis Vuitton exactly and you know and then there was another gentleman like and he took his daughter to Wimbledon mm. and he posted oh catch us at Wimbledon and he's driving his Ferrari on the way to Wimbledon yeah, yeah. so that was another one and then there is a girl called Yuliana mm -hmm. and she's from Moscow mm -hmm. and she was driving a 200,000 Pound Ferrari, and then she posted, so just Check out my right? friend. She's just a teenager, and you know, and she's her parent, the parents are really actually happy about it. And they're just these kids are rich, have been rich with Instagram. Mm -hmm. I actually heard that the guy who runs the accounts, he runs both the rich parents and the rich kids Instagram. Uh -huh. He actually said he prefers the pictures from the parents because they quote unquote earn their money uh -huh. while the kids right. are just, you know, flaunting just, around like, right. you know, know, just like rich kids. I hope my kids don't get those ideas though. Yeah, I wish I had that type of money. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If you've been following some of the Twitter hashtags, one of the hashtags is GOAT stands for greatest of all time and to whom they're referring to is Muhammad Ali. <coughs> Muhammad Ali just recently died. Yeah, mm -hmm. unfortunately. He was one of my idols. I mean, he was a great fighter. One of my favorite videos from him is when he dodged 21 jabs in 10 seconds. Have you guys seen that video where he's just like, 
No, I haven't. But he, he no doubt, his fights were among the greatest of all times. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, uh, he was such a hero. And today, you know, the world is we just all grieving about his loss. Yeah, that's right. I mean, he didn't only win fights from the ring. He won fights outside of the ring because people looked up to him. I mean, he fought against oppression and racism, mm -hmm. and he won those battles. You know, it's very unfortunate that an amazing idol like him would die at age 74. Mm -hmm. He will truly be missed, you know. Yeah, he will. I mean, even the Beatles posted a picture. Um, Obama posted a picture on Twitter. Everybody's been tweeting on Twitter about Muhammad Ali and the different pictures and various conversations they've had with him. Like, he affected everybody. Yeah, I mean, he was a fighter, you know, in the ring. He was also a fighter out of the ring, like you said, also with... He opposed the Vietnam draft as well. That was one of the things he fought for. Yeah, that's right. And even though a lot of people shunned him for that, he was respected, mm -hmm. you know, for making a stand against that. But guys, did you follow the Miss USA 2016 this year? No, you know, I actually heard about Bill, but I did not actually look at it myself. Yeah, you know, and she's an Army Reserve officer and IT analyst. Mm. The Shuana, she won the Miss USA 2016. Oh, wow, she was in the Army and she won. Yes, so she's from the District of Columbia. And, you know, when the judges asked her questions, they were truly so... Um, touched people's heart because she spoke about a woman being in the government military and how she herself would like to support veterans issue and not only that uh, I mean she really you know connected to the to the general crowd by saying I, I feel so powerful as a combat you know in, in military because I feel that gender does not limit in US for women to be integrated in more in our US military so I mean uh, she was truly inspirational and when she won the crown, it was actually a, a, a royal moment for her. And she was, oh, I bet. And I bet a lot of people, you know, liked it as well. You know, all the females in the army. And oh, stuff yes, they did. She supported all the females in the army saying that they're just as good as the men in the army and that, you know, gender should not play a role in the army. Yes. So, Dishwana, mm -hmm. congrats on winning your crown. So, Stefano, do you guys love the Harry Potter ride in Universal Studios? Mm, I've actually been on it twice. <laughs> I've never I've, been, but I would like I have it. been on it like you won't believe a dozen times, and it is one of the most thrilling rides there is. Mm -hmm. I know my mom loves the Harry Potter books. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are amazing. So, so what is the deal going on with Harry Potter recently? So what's happening is that Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, which is a play that's opening up in London, yeah. they had their um, preview night for it at the London Palace Theatre. Mm -hmm. It was around 1,500 people. And what happened is that J.K. Rowling, she posted a video to her Twitter, and she was talking about how she wanted the people that had seen the preview to keep it a secret, you know, not to give out the details. Okay. <laughs> and it's interesting because also from that video, there was also people on Twitter talking about how Hermione in the um, play is actually played by a black woman and people were getting really? upset about that and she also expressed on Twitter about how it was ridiculous that people were getting upset about that. Ah, I see. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I guess when it comes to readers and the book versus the movie and stuff like that, people are never satisfied of what's going mm -hmm. on. Yeah, and I guess we have to be more accurate with our facts and reasons. So, but Harry Potter series are truly uh, amazing and, you know, to this day, we continue waiting and seeing what's going to be next. Yeah, I think, I mean, the, the readers are getting mad because what they imagine is not what people are actually putting on the screen. No, but you mm -hmm. know, that depiction can never be accurate because, exactly. you it's know, different for every single person. So, so when I you read a fantasy sci-fi book, you always, you know, you everybody imagines in their own imaginary world what it's going to be. But exactly. That's why you can't please same. everybody. Exactly. I mean, I bet some of the African American women are happy that Hermione is a black woman. You know? Mm. So it really depends on the person. Because I've read, like, the first episode of, or the first book of Harry Potter. And I imagined it a different way as maybe you would have imagined. So you can't really. I just love the ride at Universal everybody. Studios, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I really okay. need to ride it though. <laughs> you need to. Yeah. You know, contrary to popular belief, last year versus this year's time spent on the phone and social media has actually dropped. You know, they had statistics and graphs showing that the time on Facebook and the time on Twitter mm -hmm. has mm -hmm. dramatically dropped. You know, um, for Facebook, it was something around 13% drop versus mm -hmm. last year. You guys heard anything about that? Yeah, I know. And I, you know, I was surfing through that news as well. And I was like, why is that? Is it because the time, I mean, uh, or new things keep on coming and, you know, and people like to try new 
stuff. So is, is it because of that, that reason be, or am I, I mean, um, yeah. or they just want to try new user friendly websites or digital stuff? I don't know what it is. Because I mean, a lot of social media is popping up, a lot of new ones. You know, yeah. you got Tumblr, Flickr, Instagram, you got Facebook, you got Twitter, you mm -hmm. got Snapchat. Snapchat. A bunch oh, of yeah. Different things. Snapchat it's is so, one of the most popular ones. Yeah, I just think it's. There's such a vast variety of social medias now that people have to allocate their time differently. Yeah, to, because I mean, you know, with so many, uh, so many, uh, so many applications there, and people just want to download new stuff and maybe try out new things. Yeah. Why wouldn't they? Yeah, awesome. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So the Consumer Electronics Show this year in Las Vegas actually had some surprising announcements this year. One of them was they introduced an autonomous self-flying passenger drone. Oh my god. Oh, that's a long name. It yeah. is. There's a company in China called Ehong, and they're developing a drone called the Ehong 184. Cool. And what it will be able to do is that it'll be able to drive people will be able to fly people and it will be autonomous so that there's no one actually manning the drone and all you have to use is just an app. Yeah. You would just put your destination in the app and then it can fly you to wherever it need, wherever you need to go. Is it like a car but for the air? Is that what it is? Well, think of it as, you know how you have small drones for um, whenever you have take news teams? Yeah, like to that. take yeah. pictures or news teams, they'll have drones up in the sky. Mm -hmm. Well, think of it more on a bigger scale so that can carry people. people. Yeah, that can oh, transport like people. Like mini airplanes. Wow. Pretty much mini airplane, yeah. Without a pilot. Without a pilot, yes. It just goes through an app. Autopilot, right? Yeah, yeah, autopilot. So now my question is, now we have an autopilot kind of aircraft, why don't we have mm -hmm. autopilot cars? Oh, but we hmm. already have. Tesla, well, I mean, Tesla is autopilot. It is autopilot. It is autopilot. I mean, I and would my totally son get it. I to mean, get one next year. Oh, really? You wow. Have that autopilot with the Falcon doors. So, so that means that the electric car it doesn't need fuel. Huh. It's already so out there. So that it will drive in the road. And without... if it, if it's in within our budget, you would all have one. For real, I mean, Seriously. I'm really interested in that. I would. I'd rather not drive. You know, I'd rather <laughs> have the car drive for me if possible. Huh. Yeah, so what they're actually developing these drones for is not only for transferring people, but they're partnering up with a company called Lung Biotechnology. And what they do is that they manufacture organs for transplants. Mm -hmm. And what they really want to do is they want to be able to transfer organs for people that wow. need donations That's for a them. Thing, yeah. For short distance travel because the drones itself are meant for only short to medium distances. Okay. So they said around 10 miles or so is around the um, farthest it could go, yeah. but it goes 60 miles an hour. So, oh, wow. you know, you do the math, it's pretty, pretty quick. Wow. Yeah, I see. So, you know, it's so interesting that these... you can actually use it for medical reasons as well. Mm. Hopefully, they can advance this technology and in the future it might even be something every household has because that would be awesome. That would be yeah, awesome. I can see that Guru has such great plans, <laughs> right? For <laughs> autopilot. <laughs> okay. So thank you for watching Cappuccino with Amber. We will be back again next week with my amazing co-host Stefano and the Guru. We'll catch you next time. Alright. Take care.